We're nice. Yeah. Okay, well, it doesn't seem like there's uh, anybody in that type of situation. <laughs> so Any questions then in the questions box, Jason? Uh, <laughs> we just got one from Momoye. <laughs> yeah? Extroverted students tend to intimidate the introverted ones and jump the gun. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's very true. Mm -hmm. um, I do think that a lot of the roles can come into play, that, that role activity you were just looking at as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that can be developed, even you know, passing people different cards, setting up whole activities where um, dominant pe uh, people aren't jumping down. And also a really simple classroom management technique is just nominating. You know, for example, we get, as teachers, I think we get really used to saying, does anybody, can anyone, mm -hmm. what do you think? And I think that often if we actually start giving names and, 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 and sticking to it, because there's a lot of learner training that goes on here as well, right? So in my experience, I'll say, okay, so uh, Carlos, what do you think? And then before Carlos gets anything out of his mouth, you know, I've got uh, Pedro. Oh, oh, Pedro. <laughs> she just hit something. I'm sorry. It wasn't Pedro, though. No. <laughs> Pedro over there shouts. Gigi, up. the guy we keep locked up in the cage back here. <laughs> So someone else shouts something out, and then at that opportunity, you could kind of make a joke out of it. So you can, I, which has, you know, you always, I've said in the past, oh, you know, Carlos, you've changed. Or, <laughs> oh, I, I didn't know your name was Carlos, I thought your name was, you know, whatever it is. So you can make a joke out of it. But I think in that way, you're also training students that if you nominate, you want that student to speak. Mm -hmm. and, that, and it's not actually open for everybody to just jump in at the, uh, whenever they want, including the enthusiastic. Because I think very often it is genuine enthusiasm that drives these students to speak. I don't see them in a negative light, but, you know, and sometimes I've even said to students, you know, you've been working really hard <laughs> over the past 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Take a break, and, you know, we'll see what other people have to offer. But I think so long as you say it with a bit of a smile and a, and a laugh, it's, it doesn't, necessarily make anybody feel uncomfortable, it gets the message across very clearly. So nomination is my number one uh, advice on that one. And sticking to it. Yeah. Rather than telling them to just shut up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Why aren't I in the classroom anymore? <laughs> All right, on that note. One of the most common things I hear teachers say when they come into the store, or even when I was uh, the director of a school, um, would be that they're looking for books that can help them deal with their mixed level classes. Yeah. Right? So this is my Absolutely. imagery of, uh, of different levels. <laughs> <laughs> yes, not just that little lady standing on the Yeah, this one right here. <laughs> She's lost her, yeah, Beautiful. her head is the other woman's foot. <laughs> And then, of course, there are some people who have their legs lopped off. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in, in reality, most classes are multi-level, right? Yeah, absolutely. To at least some degree. But when you have groups of students in your class that are at clearly different levels, it can be challenging to find yeah. material that directly speaks to this. Yep. I mean, really, I think that's because most any activity can be modified to suit your learners, right? Almost Absolutely. any class that uses a course book will face this situation since course books by themselves aren't personalized to the learners in your class. Mm -hmm. Maybe you, you did something from the course book this month and it worked really well, but next month you have a whole new set of students and you teach it the same way and it doesn't work. So just because you have a mixed level class, it doesn't mean that you need to make three different lessons for each class. I mean, no, if you no did, way. you would be staying up all night every night. Yeah, not good. Luke and, Luke and Lindsay suggest a good many ways to accommodate all of all your students, mostly by modifying your expectations of the students in the activity. Right? In other words, um, what you expect the students to produce during the activity can be different mm. using the same activity, right? depending on their level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or, of course, you can give them a choice as to the level of challenge that they're asked to do. Right? So you can take an activity, you can prepare a little bit for it, and give the students the choice. Do you feel that you are, uh, want something that's less challenging? Do you want something that's a little bit more challenging? Or do you want something that's really challenging? And, you know, keen students might try the really challenging one and, and not do so well, so next time they'll pick the less challenging. Right? So it, it does take some planning, but it's much less planning than, than three fully different lessons. So... Here's an example 
let's say we've been studying about question formation. And I'd like you to unscramble this and determine what the question is. Right? So we have the less challenging question right now. Uh, Tanya, what is the... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tyson. I get the least challenging. <laughs> you know me well. Uh, what are you going to do today? Right. right. And I mean... Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> is that... Oh, okay, you should have given that once in the call. I mean, some people would... I mean, do you makers, today... <laughs> might even... Oh, you what are? Do? What going? What? No, I was right. <laughs> Stop trying to confuse me, man. <laughs> you are confident enough to do the less challenging task. Right. Thank you, Tyson. Congratulations. You're welcome, Tanya. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> jokesters. I work with jokesters. <laughs> so, <laughs> in this less challenging task, what's happened is the first and last words are placed correctly, but the other words are mixed up. Right? So for students that you think need the less challenging um, activity or students that choose to be the less challenging activity, in this situation, uh, you can give them a little bit of an easier task to do. Right? So let's take another question and make it a little bit more challenging of an activity. So Nicole, can you unscramble this one for me, please? Teacher, get your... We are did. No, okay. Can you do Where it correctly? <laughs> Fine. So boring. Where did you get your t-shirt? Ding. <laughs> or ding, ding, ding. Uh, anyway. So this one's a little bit more challenging because we don't have the first and last words placed correctly. Right? Mm -hmm. All the words are mixed up. So students who want a little bit more of a challenge on question formation practice activity, they get this one. Right? And then, of course, the, we have the most challenging which is here. And what I would like all the audience members to do is to unscramble this sentence and make a correct sentence out of it. Put it in the question box, please. I think it has stumped everyone. I know. <laughs> so for all of you who are out there listening, unscramble this sentence and put it in the question box. Was that a question? It was kind of a question. <laughs> <laughs> That's the famous Canadian up speak. <laughs> no, I wasn't up speaking. No? no? I think you need to tell them the trick here, Tyson. Well, I think we've got one here. What time for coffee is good for you? What time for coffee is good for you? Uh, almost. Well, that works. That yeah, does it work. does work. Okay. Yeah. What time for coffee is good for you? What time is good for coffee for you? What time for coffee is good for you? Is coffee what you are good for? <laughs> <laughs> That's my That's favorite. My kind of person, nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that one. At what time is coffee is good for you? It's uh, uh, a good try. You're, now you're starting to get, get fabrication. Yeah. yeah. Right? What time is good for you for coffee? Okay, so we've got okay, the basic idea lovely. here, right? Yep. Now, what most of you probably have noticed is that there is an extra word. All right, so all the words are mixed up, and one word is unneeded. In this case, uh, the word is are, right? We don't need this one. So the students who want the most challenging one have the most challenging task to do, right? But all of you the students... You would tell them that there was an extra word, though. Well, I you? will. Yeah. You will when? Well, I, I didn't, I didn't want to tell the native speakers because they need to figure this oh, out Oh, you just want to mess with our That's heads. That's right. Yeah. I mean, it has to be super challenging for you. My life is super challenging. <laughs> I don't need it here. <laughs> I <didn't. laughs> so this could be used towards the end of a unit in your course book or your lesson uh, where you ask students to go through the course book or the lesson and pick out, say, sex... <laughs> Sex. <laughs> Pick six. out sex from your course books, please. <laughs> Pick out six questions or six sentences they've seen used and write them down in their notebooks. Right? <laughs> Can we grow up a little bit, please? I'm trying to move on, but we won't let him. You said sex. 